All right, guys. Uh, we all know that I love to fuck around. We all know that this podcast is just fucking around and having a good time and um, just spreading some joy, some laughter, some goofy shit for you every single week. But I did want to start off um, this podcast before the intro, before anything, um, just to take like a minute or two to just remember um, the legend that is Kobe Bryant. Um, we lost, we all lost Kobe Bryant. And I say all because the whole world was moved by this, whether you were a basketball fan or not. Um, it's Kobe Bryant. Uh, and I'm not trying to make it about, we should have make it about anyone. We should all, you know, give our memories, our experiences, whether we met the guy, knew the guy closely or not. We were all affected by this, uh, loss. Um, me personally, this is a guy who, made me love the game of basketball. He was to me what LeBron um is to a lot of guys today and and you know Le- LeBron's great, but it was just Kobe and there was no one after. Um used to shit on my brother and my cousin in 2K with uh with just strictly Kobe, not even the Lakers, but I used to I used to just score a ridiculous amount of points and I used to make motherfuckers fling controllers across the room. Um Man, like, I want to say even just mannerisms, man. Like, I, I, I tweeted the other day about how I fucking used to, you know, whether it was playing ball in the streets or playing street football in the snow or, or even baseball, I would do the whole shirt in the mouth thing like Kobe and... Yo, just just uh, rest in peace to a legend. May you know his his legend definitely will never ever die. I mean that that goes without saying on and off the court. And um, if there's one thing we can learn from this is that we need to be grateful for waking up and being able to leave the house and getting home every day. Um, and we also need to make sure that we always let our loved ones and those close to us that we feel a certain way about. If you feel a certain way about someone, love, like, care for, whatever, let them know, be upfront. Always. Keep the fucking, the, if there's petty bullshit in the way, if it, whatever it is, bro, nothing is that deep. Nothing. Like, if I'm going to get serious on you guys real quick, there is nothing in life that deep. Unless you fucking like, unless somebody fucking killed somebody or whatever the fuck, nothing is that deep. Let it go. Always let the ones closest to you know how you feel and always keep them close because you never know, bro. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. And uh, that's all I have to say. Let's let's get it popping. Why do I have my middle fingers up to start this episode? Why not? Because people blow dick. Because my boss sucks. I know it sounds like I said balls, but ball because my balls suck also. I don't have testicular cancer. I don't have testicular cancer. We're past that. My balls don't suck. Sometimes they do, like in the summer, but we're in the winter now. And now I put my hands in my pants. Like this. Censor it. Don't censor it. There's nothing going on. I just put my hands in my pants in the winter. Well, why do I have my middle fingers up? Because people blow dick. That's why. But life goes on. You keep pushing. And you fucking go to work. You you look at the good shit about that job. You go to that family member's house. You look at the good people in that house. You even if it's a fucking roach that you see, if if it's a fucking small apartment in the Bronx, for my New York listeners, 
and and you hate going home, but there's that roach that just comes out the cut. And it's like, yo, what's up? You'd be like, yo, you make my day, bro. And that's it. Guys, welcome to episode 27 of the Sin Vergüenza podcast. I had to take a week to refocus and I'm here now and I'm so focused that I was able to remember the number of the episode. <laughs> That never gets old. <laughs> um, yeah, we're here, man. You see the plants? We're very new look. You know what I'm saying? Very, we're very green out here. We're very uh vegan. To my homegirl Angel, who listens, we're very vegan. I'm not. I'm not. She's been trying to fucking get me to. She's not like try, I, I, If I say this, she's gonna be all like, "I don't do that." <clears throat> she doesn't. She doesn't. She tries to, but she's not like in my face like, you better fucking do it. The animals and and everything. Nah. I definitely want to go plant-based. Not that you care, but I definitely want to go plant-based when uh, when I get down to a certain weight. I don't really like eating meat to begin with, honestly. I made a, I made a nice little joke. It, it was funny about uh, everything I say on here is funny. Come on now. If, if you think it isn't, that's fine. That's your opinion. I'm not hurt. But I am funny though, and you're that's that's a stupid ass opinion. If you don't think I'm funny, that's fine. I feel bad for you. You have a bad sense of humor. You you're not a good person. Um, <laughs> now, nah, but I made a joke on here about uh, you know, how it's impossible for Dominicans to be vegans, and it's 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 partly true. But like, I truly, I don't like eating meat. Like I like in like after I consume meat, there's just something that it it's been my whole life since I've really i remember the first time veganism was like uh brought to my attention was in school because in fucking new york you you went to school in harlem or like in my case washington heights harlem the bronx those are the three different fucking uh neighborhoods i went to school in you never have i mean you have some yeah i can't say that but but oddly enough you always have like white white teachers in those uh in those buildings and you always had like those teachers that were like, Oh, I, I'm a vegetarian. And I was like, one day I was like, what's that? And they, they tell me, and I'm like, Oh, why do you do that? Um, because you know, this is what they do to the animals and stuff. And I'm like, Oh shit. And then after that, I think is when I started feeling sick and I've been sick ever since. So, but I also right now on this weight loss journey, um, I weighed like 258 pounds. Like, three months ago now and now I weigh 226 um I need I need protein bad so the animals are gonna have to suck it up for now it is what it is bro they're they're getting they're dying every day they're getting slaughtered every day I don't eat pork for what it's worth but I'm a shitty person still so it's cool we're all shitty people we do shitty things Speaking of shit, bro, I took the biggest fucking shit ever just now before this podcast. Like, I know it's not your business. I know it's TMI, but that shit was just massive. Like, there was no, it had no business coming out of my asshole and going into my toilet. The funny thing about that shit, it was that it was the most slept on shit ever. Like you ever take a shit, right? And this is what I'm, this is where I'm going on this podcast. It's crazy. I'm looking at my notes right now and it's like coronavirus. I don't know where this is coming from, but now it's coming off the top. Sometimes I, I just put stuff in the notes for those. I, I don't think I've ever explained this, but I just have stuff on the notes, this little BTS behind the scenes. And I just have stuff on the notes. It's just little shit like coronavirus and, and, uh, the word bud, we'll get to that later. Um, but yeah, man, like, you know, other uh, there's certain things that just come off the top. And sometimes it's the shit that I just took. It is what it is. Um, What was I going to ask you? Oh, have you ever taken a shit? That when you sit on the toilet, you just feel like it's going to be the smallest, like as, as, as before you go and as you're going, you feel like it's going to be like the smallest turd you've ever taken. And then you start pushing it out and then and then you start all of a sudden you fucking 
grab on to everything in your fucking way and it just ends up being like the biggest mountain of a piece of shit you've ever taken and you're pushing and it's and at first it feels like the smallest turd and then you just start feeling this like whole this entire like this fucking Alaskan bullworm of a turd coming out of your ass and you're just like Oh, where'd you come from? And then it's over and then you wipe your ass and then life goes on. But in the moment, because you're me and you're dramatic, you're just like, oh, shit. Yeah, you guys didn't need to know that. Am I cutting it out? Absolutely fucking not. We're going to talk about this coronavirus shit and why people think it's funny. You know, so I obviously poke fun at everything there is. Like, there's not a lot of things I won't poke fun at. Obviously, there's some things, like, limited, you know, there's there's a few things, obviously, no one should ever fucking joke about. But not that the coronavirus is, like, something that is, like, one of those things that I think you shouldn't joke about, but I just don't think it's funny. First coronavirus, I'm looking it up right now, and these are the first things that come up. First coronavirus death in Beijing is more than, as more than 27, I just got a very distracting text message on my Apple Watch that I should have just put on Do Not Disturb. Focus up, buddy. All right. Um... Yeah, first coronavirus death in Beijing as more than 2,700 cases confirmed. Fuck. All right, first of all, we're going to get down to what the coronavirus is because we're all curious, right? We don't just listen to this podcast because we're fucking delinquents, right? We want to be educated a little bit. Uh, Okay. That was one of my many laughs. It was the it was the coughing laugh because that's a crock of shit. Coronaviruses are a group of viruses that cause diseases in mammals, including humans and birds. In humans, the virus can cause respiratory infections, which are typically mild, but in rare cases can be lethal. So what is good then? Okay. People ask. Okay, this is the same thing I just read. Thanks, Google. I just want like a, I want to know why. So if it, it, that doesn't sound that bad, right? Like I'm not bugging. What I just read doesn't sound that bad. And I'm you. And I'm usually like, who the fuck is this? Yo, I need to put my fucking watch on. Do not disturb straight up. Uh... Coronaviruses are a large family of viruses that cause illness ranging from common cold to more severe diseases such as Middle East Respiratory Syndrome and severe acute. So it's all respiratory syndromes. Um, transmitted between animals and people. Uh, common signs of infection include respiratory sy- symptoms, fever, cough, shortness of breath, and difficult uh, difficulty breathing. In more severe cases, infection can cause pneumonia, severe acute. Re- yeah, you're repeating the same shit you just told me. Why do articles do that sometimes? But that's how I sound texting when I argue, though, also, because I... I look back at my... When I argue through text sometimes, and I'm like, bro, you said the same thing four times. Why are you like this? I am a World Health Organization article when I text. Look at this shit, right? Uh, Coronaviruses are a large family of viruses that cause illness ranging from the common cold to respiratory syndrome. Next paragraph. Coronaviruses are circulating in animals... And affect humans with Middle East respiratory syndrome and 
severe acute respiratory syndrome. Next paragraph. Common signs of infection include rep- respiratory symptoms. Fever. This is all in the same patagra- paragraph, by the way. Paragraph. Get the fuck out of here. Fuck. In, in more severe cases, infection can cause pneumonia, severe acute respiratory syndrome. Also me, through text, when I argue. Hey, you shouldn't have done that. Here's why. Hey, you shouldn't have done that. Here's why. Hey, I don't know if you should have done that. That's fucked up. Yo, that's just fucked up that you did that. (laughs) Like, bro, you couldn't just write that once. Are people getting mad when they write these articles? I just want to know. I just want to know if you're infected, baby, let it show. So people to undergo testing for a possible coronavirus in Oklahoma. Let's go. All right, bro. So basically this thing is like a fucking flu. It, I mean, obviously it's, ter- it's uh, yeah, CDC confirms fifth case of new coronavirus in the U.S. I'm not going to drag this shit along. When shit like this always comes out, and I think I've told you guys, I am a complete hypochondriac. And what that means is, when I see shit like this, I'm dead ass just like, yo, I'm going to die. Like, I take it mad personal. I take it so personal, and I'm like, yo, yeah, all these people are going to die, but I'm going to die. And I don't want to die because I want to go to fucking Disney and shit. I went when I was little. Yeah, I am grateful, God, but I want to go now because they got the Star Wars park. And, and Toy Story Land is coming out. And I haven't been to the Harry Potter park either, which is not Disney, but it's around there. It's a little selfish. Now I think about my daughter too, obviously, but like, I think about my daughter with all that shit, like fucking, uh, what was it? It was, uh, fuck. Oh, climate change is the number one. Duh. That's like the number one thing. I'm like, when, when, uh, when her mother got pregnant, I was like, yo, should we have made her? Like, I like, okay, so. I got to hydrate. Um, Yeah, I remember actually a little while after her mother got pregnant where um, we were chilling at the crib. And I it was the first time I watched this documentary called uh, The Flood. I think it's The Flood or Before The Flood. Well, Leo DiCaprio, it's the fucking best climate change documentary you'll ever see. It'll make you realize like how great Leo DiCaprio is as a person, aside from him being a tremendous actor. And I watched the doc. I, I say I watched the documentary because she fell asleep because when women are pregnant, they just like eat and sleep. and It's fine. You need that. She just she fell asleep like mid documentary and like I woke her up. I will, I had, cause I'm dramatic and I woke her up after the documentary and I'm like, yo, should we have made that baby that's in your stomach? She's like, what do you mean? Like, are you regretting me right now? And it's like, I just, no, I just saw this documentary that basically says we're fucked in like in a couple decades from now. So should we have like brought like, should we have created life? And she would just looked at me and was just like, dude, shut the fuck up and went back to sleep. Which is how most people look at me. And I just had a realization. And I'm not going to share it. <laughs> Yo, here's the thing. Stop sending me the Corona, uh, the Corona meme. Get the fuck out of here. Stop sending me the Corona meme, dead ass. The Corona meme is like, so here's the thing, right? You want to joke about the Corona. It, the thing is, it's such an easy thing, right? The Corona fucking virus, uh, the, the, the coronavirus. I guess after reading on it, it, it's not funny that people are dying. That's never funny. But I guess there's things that you could poke fun at. The thing that's so corny to me is, is the fucking Corona meme. So people know that I'm drinking Coronas because... I'm, I've, the, uh, they know, they know that I drink like faithfully that I've been drinking Corona premieres. 
their low carbs and their Coronas. And I love them. And I love lime like crazy. And I put the lime in the Corona and I drink it. And so people see me do that and they see that I'm like, I, that's all I drink now. And they fucking send me Corona. It's like, uh, one of them was actually, I laughed a little bit at one, a little bit because it was like, Jimmy, why'd you, why didn't you come into work today? And it says Jimmy. And then it says, uh, Jimmy said, Oh, because I have the coronavirus. And then it shows a picture of a guy just like fucking laying down with a corona next to him. Hello? Get the fuck out of here. Dead ass. It just ugh, the most cringe worthy meme I keep seeing all over the place. Stop sending me that meme, please. Thank you. I did something that I would never want done to me. And I think it was because the kid was white that I did it. But I know that that's wrong of white people to do to us, like minorities. Not even, I feel like when they do, I've said it before that when they do it to each other, I feel like it's insulting. And I'm getting there. I know I do buildups and people are always like, all right, spit it out. What the fuck is he saying? I do that. I'm guilty of that. I'll get there right now. Ready? But white people love calling white people bud. And I've explained on this podcast before that I feel like when white people say bud, it's insulting. Don't ask me why. You might chalk it up to me being an overthinking Libra. And that's cool. But I'm going to give my theory on it. Just listen. And it's simple. It's not. I'm not going to do a full breakdown. It's not that serious. It kind of is, but it isn't. But listen. When you hear them say it, there's like a tone to it. Right? Now, I'm not talking about, like, this is the thing. They say it's a kid's, first of all. If you're a grown-ass man and the white dude's like, yo, hey, bud. You're a herb if you let that guy said uh, call you, buddy. You should have smacked the shit out of him. The cause for violence, ASAP. One thing I've done to bust balls for sure during an argument with a female was call her, bud. That shit was great. I like effortless, effortless, effortlessly can't talk in in some arguments with females sometimes say bro. That's effortless hate when females call me bro <laughs> and I'm not trying to be sexist and I'm going down a rabbit hole here and I'll go right back to where I was going but effortless effortlessly talking to fe- even talking to females or or more so in an argument with a female effortless effortlessly say bro hate being called bro in or out of an argument hate it goes right up my ass now, back to the to the point. The just just listen, just tell me if I'm bugging, listen to the next time a white person calls you bud and just you like now I feel like I might be starting something but I promise you I'm not. You're going to hear it and you're going to be like, "What?" Even if you're white. Like if you're if let's not make it about if you're fucking Spanish, black, whatever. If you're, even if you're white, just listen to a grown Caucasian adult call you bud and you're going to be like, my name is Anthony. Get the fuck out of here. Don't call me that. So I left the gym the other day and this is, uh, this little white boy too young to be in LA. First of all, I don't know what the fuck was had. There's there's been a lot of those actually. I don't know if like, I mean, cool, but like they look, uh, they look like 10 or 11 and it's like, I didn't like, I remember being told we shouldn't go until we're like 13 14 and at that point still do like calisthenics and shit but this kid opened the door for me and i was like thanks bud and i was like fuck i just became what i sought to destroy the old caucasian white guy who says bud and I don't know why it slipped out. I don't know if like, I don't know why it like that sucked. Like I was, I literally like I, I walked out of the gym and I self-reflected and I was like, bro, why did you just say that? 
And th- and I just realized there was probably like a glitch in the meat in the fucking matrix. And maybe like sadly, I mean it would not sadly, it would make sense that in a past life I was probably white. I mean, I drink Starbucks a lot. Um obviously chose a lot of white women in my life. I dropped my one uh mixed baby in there. And what else? I don't want to talk about I feel like everybody's music should be out there, but I guess you can throw that in there too because I've been told that. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just don't know why I call them bud, honestly. <laughs> What else do I have here in the notes? I'm so, like, focused but not focused today. And that happens sometimes. Hopefully you still enjoy this podcast. I feel like talking about it is making it suck, huh? (laughs) That's this new thing I'm doing now. It started earlier with this podcast, and now I'm going to keep doing it. The coughing laugh. Because the coronavirus is around. Stop sending me the fucking meme. I'm serious about that shit. I'm serious, bruv. Watch it stop, boy. All right, but for real, like the um, optimistic person in me, because I feel like I'm more optimistic than pessimistic. You have to be, bro. You have to be. Like, there's a lot of pes. I feel like the pessimistic person is like there's more of those in this world, and there has to be more optimistic people. I'm optimistic. I'm more optimistic than pessimistic, definitely. And uh, I feel like the optimistic person in me wants to tell everybody to chill the fuck out. The world's not ending. Just fucking relax. Like, relax, 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 relax. Real quick, I don't want to talk about it too much because it was like last week, two weeks ago now. Why was there, there was club, there was club flyers on Sunday into Monday or Monday or even Monday into Tuesday or which are for Martin Luther King. Why was there club flyers that actually had Martin Luther King on them? Get the fuck out of here. You guys have reached a whole new level of ratchetness, of ghettoness, of just like everything. (laughs) Martin Luther King wants you to know that he died so you can have half off hookah before 11. That shit's ridiculous, but it's it's also funny as fuck. Like, where the fuck was the Jesus ones for Christmas? I didn't see those. You guys should have fucking came out the cut with those. I would have died. I would have definitely died. Julio, you listen. Sky Lounge, do it. I will go to Sky Lounge if if they fucking put uh if, if like East, what's the, uh, Easter, they should just put the motherfucking uh. <laughs> The Christian side of my family is going to kill me for this if I get this wrong. I think Easter is when Jesus came back, right? When he fucking came, when he rose from the dead. The fucking, like on Easter Sunday, they should do like hookah ads where you just see the the stone. Like, you know, the, you know, the, the, the place where Jesus was in. <laughs> You know the fucking the the place that Jesus was in and and like you just see the fucking stone door like pushed over a little bit and it and it looks like Jesus obviously like oh shit Jesus just came out and he came back. They should do that but have like Jesus like like coming out with the hookah and it and it says free hookah before 11. I should I should mark it for you guys honestly. I should mark it for the hookah lounges. I'm Dominican. I'm funny. I have good ideas. On the holidays, I'll just fucking edit pictures of uh, Jesus coming out of his deathbed with free hookah before 11. God, that was so bad. I was like, bro, what am I seeing right now? God. <laughs> All right, we're at the half an hour mark, so let me just plug my homegirl in really quick. Guys, 
Ahem. This podcast is brought to you by Solita Soap. Solita Soap is where art meets soap in a natural, organic way. Specializing in soap baskets and solution products like beard oil and rose water. 100% of the soap products can be customized with its shape, colors, herbs, organic oils, types of soap, and fragrances. So your order is created by you, and they just put it together with a little TLC. Tables, ladders, and chairs. Um, Bro, beard oil. So your beard looks nice and moisturized and smells good like this, and so girls can put their fucking fingers through your beard and be like, oh, this is the smoothest beard i've ever felt and i could just run my fingers through it and this wow and they just sit and play with your beard for like 10 minutes and then at the end of the whole thing you just lie your ass off to them and be like that's my natural beard there's nothing in it even though you used solita so beard oil you lie you lie we all lie there's that there's cute little soap baskets for the kids. There's, bro, Valentine's Day is coming up. You want to get those panties What? Make a fucking playlist. Get a soap basket. Boom. I just fucking landed you a night where at the end of the night, you'll probably go home and play Love Faces and the rest is history. Just don't make any kids because the world is ending sooner or later, I think. That was the pessimistic side of me. I'm sorry. Guys, I'm all over the place today, but I think it's going to be funny. I think you'll love the podcast, and that's me being optimistic now again. Hit the link in my bio. Click on the Solita Soap tab. Get yourself something nice. Get your lover. Taylor Swift voice. Something nice. Get your fucking aunt, your uncle. If you're an uncle in Alabama who has something with your niece, that's your business. Get her something nice. Solita Soap. At the checkout, use promo code SEEINGVERGUENZA for a nice discount. Yes, I did a little fucking, a slight little bachata tease at the end of that. I'm tweaking today and it's because I drank coffee before right before this podcast and went into a slight rage and now I'm drinking water and now I think that the the key to this podcast let me know is drinking coffee right before it and going into slight rages fuck you know my Alexa just said Ask me to make you smart. Bitch, I'm already smart. And my beard's soft. And my dick is long. And I'm fucking tan. And it's brown. So it's brown. And I don't know what's wrong with me today. Yo, so straight up, there was the, the Royal Rumble happened this weekend. WWE's Royal Rumble. The Royal Rumble. It's a wrestling event for those who don't know. Where it's like the first, the first big one leading up to what we all know what WrestleMania is at least, and it's thirty people in the ring and they're throwing each other out of the ring until the last one is standing. Right? Cool. I just thought of how much gay shit we let slide when we were fans of wrestling, like shit that they definitely don't do anymore. When we were kids, we definitely watched it and we were like, "That's mad funny," but it was gay. And not that there's anything wrong with being gay. If you've been a long-time listener of the podcast, there's absolutely nothing wrong with being gay. If you're gay, you're gay. I don't have a homophobic bone in my body. Um, if people are homophobic, that's that just means they're gay also. And, yeah, there's nothing wrong with being gay. I was actually thinking about starting off the podcast dramatically and being like, I'm gay. I'll revisit it right now, actually. I'm gay, guys. I'm gay. I am gay. Let it sit. Let's see how many fucking listeners I still have after this. Cool. Now, I just wanted to say it. Girls say it all the time. Girls say it all the fucking time. 
you know, when they're fucking going through shit with the opposite sex, when they're going through that much shit or they're going through that much like bad luck with the opposite sex and they're just like, you know what? I'm fucking lesbian. I hate men. I'll never hate women, but I will tell you that I'm I'm gay. I'll I'll sleep on it for a little bit, but I'm gay. For now. Like I'm not going to walk out of my house and suck a dick, but for now I'm definitely I I'm gay. Again, being dramatic. Why can't why a woman can say it and I can't? You know what I mean? That's homophobia right there. You know what that means, sir? You're gay. That's it. (laughs) Oh, God. I'm fucking all over the place. Jesus Christ, man. I'm about to make this random ass phone call real quick. (laughs) This is going to be awesome. So my friend just texted me and I was like, yo, if this works, I'm probably going to. I'm going to I'm going to hit her up for sure, because it's definitely going to work. Yeah, I'm going to hit her up. Uh, This is good. This is random as fuck. And it couldn't have because I saw her name pop up in my because I didn't turn my fucking texting thing off. And uh it's going to work. It couldn't have been a better time, honestly. Because we were talking about this shit. And let me just let her know that I'm on the podcast. If she picks up, she picks up. If she doesn't, it doesn't. It wasn't meant to be. It'll be really awkward if she doesn't. Is she going to pick up? Is she going to pick up? She's not gonna pick up. She's not gonna pick up. She, yo. Hi. <laughs> yo, she had no idea today was the day. Oh my god. What the fuck happened? What are you doing? I'm podcasting right now. Oh no. I was no, at... no no. Why? Obviously you no. know. No, come on. You didn't even you didn't even give me a heads up. This is a part of your plans. What do you want me to do? I was like, yo, if she doesn't pick up, I'll just have to fucking How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you? I'm good. I just got out of class. So what do we call you? Do we call you Dr. Love? Uh I prefer I prefer Dr. G, you know. Dr. G. Dr. G. <laughs> I just dropped the fuck. Did you hear that? Did you hear the air horns? Or no, it doesn't go back no. to you. Damn. Mm-hmm. Yo, so I basically hopped on the podcast. I have to. I'll catch you up later. But I basically hopped on the podcast and was like, I'm gay. Because you're what? I hopped on the podcast. You know how females sometimes they like they deal with enough shit from guys that they just end up being like, yo, you know what? I think I'm lesbian and I'm done. Yeah. I pretty much hopped on the podcast and was like, yo, I'm gay. And what made you come to that? Uh... Cause that's where we're at. Realize- that's where, that's where you're at. That's where we're at. I'll, I'll catch. I'll catch you up. But that's where we're at. Okay. She's like. So yesterday she was. So so she's known me for for a very long time. And yesterday she was mm-hmm. picking my brain, and was like, "Yo, you're an overthinker." Would you, that's what you would say about me? Yeah. Like, yeah, you uh, are. Yeah. Like an unhealthy amount. <laughs> she's fucking like, "Yo, get me off this shit right now." <laughs> Yo, but do yeah, I, do like I, would I over, because, because Here we you go. just think, you think too far ahead, you know, like you just gotta be in the moment. Like you're thinking about 10 steps ahead. You're, you're looking at something in the distance and you're like, fuck, like, you know, <laughs> when you just gotta take, when you just gotta take one step at a time, you know, just enjoy the moment. There we go. Would you say that I overthink more than the average female? I would say it's equivalent. You're kind of like me, you know? You're kind of like, yeah, I would say you're like me. So yesterday, the, the, one, of the, one of the pieces of advice, of, of advice that she gave me was, it was so funny how you broke it down. Because she was basically, this was the conversation we had yesterday that we were alike in that way. And she was like, mm-hmm. yo, this is how I used to do shit. But the next time I have someone... I'm not going to do it that way anymore. So you should start now. 
<laughs> and I was, and I sat there and I was like, yo, you're I'm your fucking lab rat. <laughs> Cause I'm currently in. I didn't even, you know what? I didn't even think of it like that, but you know, it is true. It is like you should do that, though. Yeah, but it's also true that I'm in your lab, right? Because I'm also. not, I'm not ready for that. But you know, you. Yeah, but the way, the, <laughs> the way you broke it down, was like the next time I have that. Like the next, yeah. I think it was like the next guy that lands in my life or whatever you said. I'm gonna. That's how. This is how I'm gonna do it. I'm not gonna look ahead. And yeah. and you were like, you should do the same. And I and I just sat there. And I looked at. I looked at my phone. And I was like, how fucking convenient. I'm your yeah. lab rat. So so you're basically wait. You're gonna. You're probably gonna oh, wait no, for me to tell I you. Say I wouldn't say you're my lab rat. I just think you have an opportunity in front of you, and seeing that I'm the same way like I I overthink sometimes and I make something bigger than it is that like if you have this opportunity right now you should you should just enjoy it you should just enjoy it guys that's advice for someone out there because I have to catch her up and things might be different the next time we podcast oh god <laughs> she just rolled her eyes she's like yo 90 percent sure this nigga's overthinking right now yeah i'm sure you are and then you i have to talk you off the and then i have to talk you off the ledge you know wow i can't believe i'm on this right now i don't <laughs> even you know what were you doing <laughs> i was i just got out of class i wasn't expecting this uh, what time is it really? you better not put this in there it, it's gonna be in there. There was some fucking you know, solid yeah. advice in this whole thing, and there was also the fact that <laughs> you're also low key kind of shitty for making me your lab rat, but it's cool. Well, are you gonna do it or not? I don't know. We'll talk after this podcast. Why not? We'll we'll, we'll have we're gonna have a chat. No, but what? Give me three reasons why you wouldn't just be more open to being in the moment. I what 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 uh, what does it benefit for you to like? <laughs> No, honestly. All right, all right, all right. Let, let the let everybody know what what how does that? You just want to equally be like on blast right now, because you're like, why the fuck am yeah. I on this podcast? And yeah, my... that's yeah, you know, that's so, what it is. So three reasons. Yeah, three reasons why. I. Yeah. Am. Gay. She just rolled her eyes. She doesn't realize what podcast she's on. This isn't the time and place. Unfortunately, it's the time and place for you to be on. Just hey, out of the, I this don't know. is Doctor. This is Doctor G. And if you <laughs> <laughs> tell them what to, and if you want to call me, you let's know, go and ask for my advice. Let's go. You need to be open to talking about things. Yo, serious inquiries only, and you got to yeah. go through me. I'm like her secretary slash lab rat. <laughs> Yo, you look like you're studying hard, so I'm gonna let you get back to it. All right. I'll holler at well, you thanks after. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Bye. Bye. That was hilarious. Oh, my God. That came out the blue. She's funny. She's a fucking riot. Um, that all came from me saying I was gay, huh? Might be true tomorrow. Might see me. I'll, I'll be at the gay pride parade regardless because those are my niggas. <laughs> she said, oh, my God. <laughs> you cannot <laughs> put that in. Oh, my God. Your face is not in it. You're fine. Relax. Yo, so. <sighs> um, What the fuck did I also have? Oh, wrestling. Bruv. Watch his top boy once again. I went I I I came across cuz it's Royal Rumble weekend and shit. I still follow wrestling Twitter. It's cool. Like I came across um this video if you YouTube a video of Viscera dude, this nigga used to like his finishing move used to be like one of his finishing moves used to be like he used to fucking slam the person on the ground and then go in front of them and do this and fucking move his hips around and shit and dance in front of them and almost like kind of almost teabag them in a way. We all know about Rikishi. Like we know about Rikishi. We knew that we let that slide. Like we knew about that for Mad Long. Like we were okay with that. Like that's that's fine. 
viscera though like rikishi is like well known worldwide but if you want to go even worse than some nigga fucking shaking his like big fat ass in your face like the samoan dude youtube viscera signature moves and this dude no word of a lie bro would like fucking slam you and then you're laying down in the ring and then he'll fucking bounce on the ropes and do this whole thing and then bounce on the ropes again and then just fucking you're laying down face down and he'll leap up and and just he's this dude is like a big fucking black like 400 pounder and he and he just like throws himself on you and then he'll do this thing where you know his nuts land on your head and then he'll turn around am i doing am i saying this right no 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 yeah his his so he'll jump up his he'll fall on you He'll throw himself on you. His nuts land on your head and then he'll fucking pull your pull your fucking tights up and smack your ass a couple times and then turn around. This is the fucking worst part. He'll turn around after smacking your ass a couple times and then at this point when he turns around, his head is on your head, meaning his fucking penis is on top of your ass, right? And then he humps the shit out of you. I'm not talking baby strokes. I'm talking like he's fucking like if there was no tights or fucking clothes involved, he's he's fucking you in your ass. Get the fuck out of here. That's gay. And what I didn't understand is that I don't think he was gay and I don't think that the other wrestlers were I, like, how was everybody okay with this? That's what, and it wasn't when it wasn't like now that, if, you know, there's gay wrestlers now and everyone's okay with it. It was like back then when wrestling was like, you could say wrestling was like one of those things that could fall under like the toxic masculinity list. That shit was gay. And it, it was let it like, they let it slide for so long. I didn't get that. Holy fuck, Viscera. The wor- the, the, oh, his fucking intro, too, was mad funny. The world's largest love machine, Viscera. Look how accurate that was. Ready? And then it was like sexy music after that. You, re- you ready for how funny this is? Viscera. Theme song. You ready? If you fucking remember this motherfucker, give me a hell yeah. Listen to this shit. The world's largest love machine, Viscera. Look at how sexy that sounds, bro. <laughs> Yo, if you look up Viscera theme song and you click on the first one that comes up, you'll there's just like you if you didn't know who he was, you'll just like find how interesting this whole fucking shit is. It's just this like big black creepy looking dude with, cause he has contacts in and for whatever reason he has like a baldy, but with a gold mohawk on it. And the intro is just like in the beginning, it sounds like a creepy, a creepy, like, <clears throat> like if Barry white had a fucking evil twin, it'd be viscera. The world's largest love machine. Viscera. The world's largest mm. love machine. Viscera. I'm so good at some impressions, honestly. Like the ones that don't matter. The world's largest love machine. Viscera. And then the sexy music. Me, 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 me. They should have added world's like creaking largest in. Largest love machine. Like right here, like they should have did. Those are the baby strokes, and then again, because he's killing it. You know whose bed doesn't sound like that? Mine. Because I suck in bed. Not because I have this solid ass fucking bed frame. That's not an excuse, though. I feel like noises should be heard. That's why you only hear this. That's why you hear that. If 
you don't hear that. E, e, e. Yo, if I was in the fucking WWE production truck or the fucking studio where they make the music, I would have definitely been like, yo, you should, de- you know what this song needs? I would have been in the fucking, the, the WWE production studio at the time. And I would have been like, they would have, we would, we would have all had a meeting and they would have, we, they would have all been like, all right, guys, here's a meeting about fucking WWE music. Today we're discussing the creepy evil twin brother of James Earl Jones's theme song, Viscera. So let's play it. And if you have any side notes, let's go. The world. And I would have raised my hand. Love machine, Viscera. Um, boss. I have an idea. You know what this song needs? Creaking. I'm sorry. And Vince McMahon's in there. I'm sorry. What kind of creaking do you uh, do, are you speaking of? <clears throat> Bed creaking, sir. If you listen to the song here, the only thing that this creepy song needs after this intro. Largest love machine. Is this. this Whatever units, dollars, whatever that fucking song sold on the WWE, the music album or whatever, would have sold so much more if they did that. Just saying. That nigga's crazy. But as I've said before, I'm not that out there. Like, real quick, random, I wouldn't. Here's the thing, too. I, I, and I talked about this with a friend recently. Ugh. Love drinking water. I couldn't have a threesome, bro. Now, let me explain that. As I've said on this podcast before, I don't just like fucking. So I don't think that I would like, I don't think that I would do it randomly with like two random girls. Cause that's not what I do regularly. Now, when I'm thinking about it where it's like, it's two girls that I know, I can't even think about that either. Cause that means that, I, that means that I, one of the girls I'm closer to and the other girl I'm a little close to, like one of the girls is like, I'm very close to her and we have something going on. And the other one is just like, I or her or whoever was like, oh, you know what? We're all close and we all find each other like attractive. So we should all do it. No offense to swingers. But I just, like, can't wrap my head around it, me personally. Like, I, like, I feel like I would, like, I'm a very, pe- I'm a big people pleaser, and I'm a very, like, in my head person, especially if I'm in my head, period, I'm definitely in my head during sex, no doubt. And I feel like I would just be, like, I, like the way I think, I would just be like, yo, but would she be okay with this, though? And I would be thinking the way my my friend, um, that was my friend Christina, by the way, earlier. The way my my friend Christina thinks w- was explaining me that I think into the future a lot. I would be thinking into the future in that moment. I would be like, yo, but would she be okay with this though? And does this mean that she's going to ask me if we can do this with two, with me and another guy? And impossible because the minute that that dick goes around her at all, I'm just going to knock the dude out in the middle of sex. So I just wouldn't even explore it, to be honest. And I feel like I would be the same way about the girl, too. Like, I wouldn't put hands on the other girl, but I would just be like, hey. Like, I feel like in the middle of the threesome, like, I got, I don't know how threesomes work. I'm just fucking walking myself through it. Like, I feel like I would be having sex with a girl that I'm really, really into. And then uh, what do guys do? They Then the other girls do something and then they jerk off and watch. I don't know. But I feel like. If like say I watch a lot of porn, obviously I don't think I watch a lot of threesome porn, and I and I'm trying to think 
really use my brain here and ask why. And I think it's just, it's just like a too much going on. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like if it was one of those positions where like, I'm say I'm having sex with the girl that I'm really into. And then her face is getting, um, rolled by the other girl. I feel like in the middle of that, like, I I feel like this is the girl And if I'm fucking like, this is, this is the thing, right? And this is even with the girl. This is like, I'm selfish when it comes to people I'm into. So I couldn't have a threesome. Like, even if it was another girl, like call me gay and shit. But like, bro, like, I feel like if I was on top of the girl that I'm into, um, that I'm really into, because like I said, it's always the girl you're really into. And then there's the girl that you're kind of into or whatever the fuck you do when you have threesomes. This is why I couldn't have a threesome. If you're watching the visuals, this would be a lot more visual. But if and this I just have the water bottle as the other girl. If I'm if I'm on top of the girl that I'm really into and I'm having sex with her, right? And I'm doing my thrust, and then in my fucking right in my vision, I see the other girl on top of her face, riding her face, I feel like mid stroke, I would just be like, get the fuck off. And just shove her off violently. Because this is mine. This is all mine. And who invited you to the fucking party? What, we all got drunk and we fucking decided, hey, let's have a three? No, not doing. And that's why I wouldn't have a threesome, folks. Um, I just wanted to talk about this fucking movie. Marriage story. Has anyone seen it? I think I might have talked about it quick on this podcast. Dude, this movie will make you, if you already don't want to get married, this movie will make you not want to get married even more. Honestly, it's on Netflix. It's a good watch. It's very educational. If you come from a broken family, eh? right here, this guy. Am I going to vent about it right now? No, because everyone comes from broken families. If you come from a broken family, there's a lot of things, and you remember that shit, and you remember how toxic that shit can get, there's a lot of scenes in that movie that will strike a nerve 100%. We're getting vulnerable as fuck on this podcast today, and that's fine. If you grew if you grew up <clears throat> in a broken home, and you remember everything and you saw your parents go through the whole divorce and them using shit against each other and the whole dirty fucking disaster. This movie will definitely hit a couple nerves. It'll also like if you came from that, you already traumatically are like, I'm never getting married ever because fuck my parents. Second, then you watch this movie and you're like, oh, double not getting married. Just listen to this fight. doing wrong how i was falling short life with you was joyless so then you had to go and fuck someone you else? shouldn't be upset that i fucked her. also it's be so upset. white because <laughs> <laughs> the way they're fighting is so white but it's also so sad too though. life with you was joyless oof so then you had to go and fuck someone else? scarlett johansson can get it with the mom her. cut that she has in this movie that I too had a laugh with her. do you love her no but she didn't hate me mm. you hated me you hated Oh. You fucked somebody we worked with. You Jesus, Adam sex Driver. With me in the last year. I never cheated on you. That was cheating on me. But there's so much I could have done. I was oh, a director man. in so my 20s fucking who came from guy. nothing and was Save suddenly it. on the cover of fucking Time Out New York. I was hot shit and I wanted to fuck <laughs> everybody and I didn't. And I loved you and I didn't want to lose you. But I'm in my 20s and I didn't want to lose that too and I kind of did. Laugh. But and you wanted so Nah, but the performances much, so are fast. awesome, though. I didn't even want to get married. got mad nominations, right? Fuck it! There's so Listen. much I didn't do. <laughs> oh, thanks for that. You're welcome. Mm. I can't believe I can know you forever! <laughs> Yo, Scarlett Johansson just jumped up and down. It was like, I can't believe I have to know you forever! Rawr. This shit sucks, because I actually grew up watching a lot of this. There's so much I didn't do. <laughs> oh, thanks for that. You're welcome. Oh, God. I can't believe I can know you forever. Oof. 
mm. insane. And he pulls a straight up, and he pulls a straight up Kyle who drinks Monster and punches a hole through the wall. Yes. Fucking insane. Oof. That was also very Kylo Ren of him. If you watch Star Wars, he's from fucking Star Wars, and he plays a guy who just goes into a rage and breaks shit. You forever. You're Boom. Insane. Kyle who drinks Monster. And you're fucking winning. Are you kidding me? Here we go. I wanted to be married. I'd already lost. That's bullshit. You didn't love me as much as I loved you. I'm never what does that have married, to do with bro. LA? All right, this is going to spoil Every some day of I wake up. Oh, this is the worst part. You're such a dick. Every day I wake up. Like, oh, God. Listen to this. And identify it as selfishness anymore. You're such a dick. Every day I wake up and I hope you're dead. <sighs> dead like if I can guarantee Henry would oh. be okay. I hope you get an illness and they can hit by a car and die. <sighs> Imagine that. Jesus. Every day I wake up and I and I look at you and I hope you get the coronavirus and die. <laughs> that fucking sucks, bro. You'll watch this movie and never want to get married, honestly. Every day I wake up and I hope you're dead. Dead like if I can guarantee Henry would be okay. I don't people get an illness and they get hit by a car and die. Dude, I saw the scene and when I when he said that I was like, bro. And then he collapses to the ground and cries. Cause he didn't mean what he said. And I don't wanna get married ever. Because everyone sucks and no one really knows what they want. <sighs> All right. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Yo, real quick. Why the fuck are dreams so weird? I know I'm a little into the OT and that's fine. This is the last thing I'm going to discuss. Why are dreams so fucking weird? Like everything about dreams is weird as fuck. Like, weird, like, bro, everything. When I hear people talk about dreams and they're like, I had a dream last night that I met my crush and we went to the movies and don't get me wrong, like, I, may, like even when I have a dream about somebody that I fuck with, it's, like, weird. Like, it has to be them and, like, all of their exes are in this house that, I've never been to in my life and I can't make it out. It's not from a movie. It's not from anywhere. It's like a house I've never fucking been to. And it's always like that. It's always like that. Like your dreams are weird as fuck, bro. Like it's never your house ever. Why is that shit? Why is that? It's never a house. It's always a house that like you've never been in. It's so when you dream for me anyway, it's it's like when you dream the house that you're in, it's never a house you've ever been in and you'll never go to. Or it's a house that you will be in, but you'll never see for another six years and you you will only see it from the outside. Like when you're driving by it and you're like, hey, that's the house that was in that dream. Right. But what? Like one day, like this dream I had recently like, not, not, I didn't have the dream recently, but I had a dream fucking, and don't ask me why I remember this. Like, clearly, from what my friend said earlier, I'm in my head a lot. But I had this dream years ago that I fucking was in a house with Jay-Z and Beyonce. And I was, and when I woke up, I was like, that was a nice house. They don't live in it because it looks like a Caucasian-ass house that probably would be in East Greenwich. And I was driving by a house in East Greenwich when I was working the other day. And I was like, bro, that's the fucking house from the Jay-Z and Beyonce dream. What the fuck life? That's the type of shit that makes me feel uneasy and just makes me want to like unplug whatever the fuck is plugged in that's making us run and just makes me want to like clock out and be like, bro, that's weird. Don't do that to me ever. 
Like, I dead ass had a dream that I was in a fucking Caucasian ass house that Jay Z and Beyonce would never own. Like, like a fucking, <clears throat> literally like a fucking Caucasian house in a Caucasian neighborhood on a Caucasian corner in East Greenwich. I had this dream like maybe like last year, two years ago. I drove by the fucking East Greenwich house the other day. I'm not trying to make myself sound all fancy like I fucking have visions and shit, but that's fuck. That's weird, bro. That's weird. All right, I'm gonna leave you guys with one thing. Sometimes my rants are short. Sometimes they're long. I just had to go on a fucking quick rant about that because that was weird. This is how gay I'm probably going to be after today. And this is a funny video I found on Twitter. This happened also like last week. Orlando Brown, Mr. Fucking Dude from That's So Raven, her like one guy friend. <clears throat> he said this shit about fucking Nick Cannon. If you didn't catch it. You'll catch it here for the first time. If you did, then we'll laugh about it again. Oh, don't worry about Nick. This is my... Nick, okay, look. This is my life in fucking... This is my life in, like, fucking three years if people keep sucking. Oh, don't worry about Nick. Nick, okay, look, fine. Fine, okay? You want me to tell everybody? You want me to let everybody know what happened? Let's talk about Nick Cannon. Okay, fine. Nick, I let you suck my dick. Okay? <laughs> Fine, I said. I let Nick suck my <laughs> d- and, <laughs> and Yo. I liked it. It was okay. Nick, you suck my d- but everybody knows you did it as a female. But y- Nick, what does that d- even mean? I don't want to say that. You know? He's in fucking like Walmart because the, the worst music is playing and you and, and he's just what you hear carts and everything and he's wearing a do rag and why wouldn't you wear a do rag at Walmart? Oh, don't worry about Nick. My Nick. favorite part okay, is look, this right fine. here. Hold on. Fine, okay? You want me to tell everybody? You want me to let everybody know about that? Okay, fine. Nick, I let you suck my dick. Okay? <laughs> fine, I said. I let Nick suck my dick. And, <laughs> and I liked it. it was yes! Okay. Fine. Yes! Nick, my dick. He admitted liking it. it as a female. I, I kind of believe, I only believe that Nick Cannon did do it because he was, because he was so sincere with the, he was like, I liked it, you know? Yo, Orlando Brown, stay off the meth. Shout out to Stephen A. It's usually weed, but this dude's definitely. Yo, he's the one black guy that's on meth. Like, whenever you see anybody on meth, I'm sorry, but it's usually fucking white people. Whether it's Breaking Bad, Shameless, whatever the fuck, it's usually white people. Orlando Brown is the only fucking black guy that I suspect is on meth. Like, if there's, like, he, I think he's on meth, like, clearly. But if he is, then that means he's the only fucking black guy that's on meth. Because no other black, no other fucking black dude would actually do that. But that's what Disney does. My favorite part again. Let me let everybody know about that. Okay, fine. Nick, I'll let you suck my dick. Okay? Fine, I said. I let Nick suck my d- uh, and <laughs> and I liked, I liked it. It, it. <laughs> it was okay. Fine. Nick, Yo, you suck my. D- what a backhanded but knows compliment. You did it as a female. But oh my Nick, god! My d- what happened with even with Nick Cannon? Nick Cannon. I don't know how. If I was Nick Cannon, I would be watching that video and I'd be like, "Damn, he exposed me." But you know what? He said he liked it in front of all these people, and that's cool. Cool, man. Maybe I'll suck your dick again. Well, this podcast was very gay. So don't ever listen to this podcast ever and say that I'm homophobic because I was very homofluid is the word. Am I am I misusing words? Able able to flow easily. Yeah, it was very gay and and flowing easily gay all right guys i will probably wake up tomorrow and still definitely love women because women are beautiful creatures and that's what i go for but also gay
Episode 27 of the Sin Vergüenza podcast went into overtime because I love you niggas and it's been two weeks and I was a mess. And I hope this is the key right here. I think it's just to have coffee and fucking go into a rage like fucking uh, Adam Driver did in Marriage Story. Love you. I hope you love me. I hope you love my plants. I hope you love my new setup. And I hope you keep subscribing to the YouTube if you're listening. Subscribe to the YouTube. If you're watching the YouTube, subscribe on whatever the fuck. Even if you don't listen to it on Apple or Spotify or Google, just subscribe somewhere. Leave a rating. Do something. Get me out there. Help me so that I can do more shit. Because more shit is happening and more shit is coming. And it's coming hard. All right, guys. Until next week. I hope that you get an illness and die. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy.